The main story is at 7. Health officials announce new quarantine rules. No test required for asymptomatic individuals after 14 days. Dr. Lester Simon has a warning for rogue doctors. We are watching them. We know who they are. 63 new COVID-19 infections and 54 additional recoveries confirmed. And the port manager sheds light on another major new development in transformation project. The details begin right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening, you're tuned with the ABS Evening News. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Sequoia Serbia. Thank you for joining us. New rules have been announced which will immediately affect over 1,500 people placed in quarantine. The updates were provided today in a special media briefing by the country's top health officials. That's right, Sequoia. Now, if you were placed on quarantine after being exposed to a confirmed COVID-19 case, but you are asymptomatic at the end of 14 days, you can leave quarantine without a COVID-19 test. ABS has comprehensive coverage on this issue this evening, beginning with this report from Shana Keisha Francis. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Rhonda Seely Thomas outlines the basis of the Health Ministry's updated policy on quarantine release. Based on uh, the recommendations from the World Health Organization and our internal consultations, um, we have made a decision that quarantine for COVID-19, um, contacts of COVID-19 cases will end after 14 days. Dr. Seely Thomas says they will not be doing any testing for the release of people from quarantine because World Health Organization has advised it is not necessary at this time. No testing for the persons who are in quarantine once they remain asymptomatic. I have to stress that because persons who are in quarantine once they are symptomatic they would need to um, seek medical attention and possibly get tested for COVID-19. Head of the laboratory at Sir Lester Bird Medical Center, Dr. Lester Simon, says WHO has provided this recommendation after extensive tests on how the coronavirus transmits. They know scientifically that that virus at that stage is dead, just as we killed it at the beginning when we were testing. So you can see where I'm leading to, that even though the virus is dead at the end stage, if you take a sample, the sample will still be positive, but the sample on that virus is not infectious. This new arrangement relates to people who are in quarantine after having been exposed to the virus, but who remain asymptomatic after 14 days. The CMO explains the new arrangement for infected individuals in isolation. So those who are asymptomatic, um, because we do have cases of COVID-19 who are asymptomatic, they could be released after, um, after 10 days with a rapid, rapid, antigen, antigen, rapid yeah. antigen test. And for those who are uh, symptomatic, uh, it's 10 days plus three days without symptoms. Shanakisha Francis for... You know, ahead of the laboratory at the Celeste Bird Medical Center, Dr. Lester Simon is apologizing to some individuals who have spent much longer than two weeks in quarantine without being contacted by health officials. The health officials are promising improvements in the monitoring process, as we hear from Sherilyn Beezer. I think it's important for us to say at this time as well to apologize for the long delay that some people have had, the ones mm -hmm. who have actually called and said, I'm in quarantine for two, three weeks, four weeks, and nobody have called again or profuse apologies for the length of time people have had to stay in quarantine beyond the 14 days. Head of the laboratory at the Celeste Bird Medical Center, Dr. Lester Simon, at a media briefing on Wednesday morning. Meanwhile, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Ron DeSeely Thomas says the level of monitoring on those in quarantine will be improved. And we are going to step up our checks to persons' homes. This is one way where we can get persons back out to work in a more timely manner instead of having to wait and wait and wait for a test for release. The CMO explains how an employer is notified about an employee who is required to go into quarantine. Once we place someone in quarantine, they're given a sick leave um, from the Ministry of Health. 
from our epidemiology unit, and that's how the employer knows that the person was placed in quarantine. As it is now, all who remain asymptomatic will leave quarantine after 14 days without the need for a test. Sherilyn Beza reporting for ABS News. Meanwhile, Dr. Lester Simon has fired a shot across the bill as he warns some doctor in, in the country to ensure they follow the rules. He is concerned they are rogue doctors in the country. He was elaborating on the response to a journalist's question regarding whether there has been an improvement in the way private doctors have been reporting information regarding COVID-19 to the health ministry. I think it's important to t tell some doctors out there, and I said this as, as, a, as a member of the disciplinary committee, to, to not lead themselves into temptation. You know, um, deliver themselves from whatever evil they may see as far as certain things are concerned, because they, their kingdom will not come. All right, we are watching them. We know who they are, and there are rogue doctors out there. Active cases of COVID-19 in Antigua and Barbuda increased to 1,125 as the country records 63 new infections and 54 additional recoveries. As of 6 p.m. October 4th, 89 samples were processed at the Celeste Bird Medical Center. A further 158 samples were processed by the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA. The new cases bring the country's COVID-19 tally to 3,581. Head of the laboratory at Sir Lester Bird Medical Center, Dr. Lester Simon, makes it clear the Delta variant of the coronavirus continues to be dominant. Meanwhile, 49 of the infected individuals are hospitalized. Four patients are exhibiting severe symptoms, 12 are considered moderate, and the remaining 33 are mild. Meanwhile, as of yesterday, 43,648 people have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. A further 10,088 people are partially vaccinated. Meanwhile, close to 54,000 people in Antigua and Barbuda have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. There has been a major surge in the number of people getting the jabs in recent weeks, propelled by the government's vaccine mandates. Now Garfield has been crunching the numbers at the Smart Board. Thank you so much. Good evening again to you, Ash Sequoia, and good evening to all our viewers. So uh, we have been crunching those numbers in relation to vaccination, and this slide behind me, this line graph, shows all you need to know about, for example, a significant surge we have seen in the number of persons who have received the COVID-19 vaccine in just the past few weeks. And we've been tracking those numbers since around about the 1st of September, and there you're looking at the significant number of, for example, our first doses. So Let's look at, for example, this particular slide. So we started around about the month of September, around about just over, uh, just under 7,200 people with a first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. But just look around about uh, the latter part of the month. Just look at the significant surge that you've seen uh, in the number of people who have gotten the first dose. Remember, there are five vaccine options in this country, four of them uh, requiring a two-dose regimen. The other one, Johnston Johnson, requiring just a single dose. So the first dose, we're talking about the four of those options which require two doses, significant surge from the 1st of September to round about the 23rd, 24th. It's off the chart, literally, because over 8,700 persons here are vaccinated with the first dose. Now let's go on into our next slide, which talks about the situation in October. Let's look at the completely vaccinated individuals. And again, you are seeing a very, very steady uptick. Let's look at this very sharp incline here, very, very steep. And that's as a result, round about from the 16th, round about to the 24th. What happened during that time which caused this very, very sharp uptick? The government announced vaccine mandates, mandatory vaccination for public servants. And of course, they would not receive payment as of the 1st of October. 
in October, the number is again significantly high. Now this number that we have here, just under 44,000, and now that's where we are. Just under 44,000 individuals have received a first dose. Around about 43,600, as, as Sequoia would have mentioned earlier. But there you go. This is a day-by-day -day number on the vaccination figures. The target, remember, is 80,000 individuals who must be fully vaccinated in this country. The government wants to essentially reopen the economy, reopen, remove some of those restrictions. For that to happen, we must get to herd immunity. For herd immunity to happen, or national immunity, community immunity, we must get to 80,000. So it's a race to 80,000. We're just around about the 44,000 mark for people who are fully vaccinated. But again, bear in mind that you're going to add another 10,000 or so because that's the number of people who have received a first dose in addition to this number who are completely vaccinated. So in a few weeks, let's go back to this number that we're looking at because in a few weeks, we should be having a situation where there should be over 50,000 individuals who would have received a first, would have been completely vaccinated. Again, remember the first dose to add to what we said earlier, around about 10,000 individuals. Again, that chart showing the extent to which the vaccination surge continues. You're being asked to play your part. Health officials are saying to you, go out and get vaccinated. As I said, the number, the race is 80,000. That's the magic figure that we're looking at. At this point, just under 54,000 people would have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. And these numbers tell it all, the significant surge we've seen in September. By the way, the day-by-day -day figures require talk about the significant uptick we've had in the number of deaths. Around about the first week of September, there were about 45 or so deaths. By the end of uh, September, going into the early part of this month, the death toll has reached 89 at least. So again, as the number of individuals who are vaccinated goes up, we also have to bear in mind the number of infections, hospitalizations, and deaths has also uh, been a sharp reminder of the need to get vaccinated to prevent hospitalizations and to reduce the number of deaths. Again, we'll, we'll continue to monitor this situation, but again, if you're just joining us, very, very sharp figure showing a very steep incline in the number of people who have received at least the first dose. Back over to you, Sikwai. Thank you so much, Garfield. Now in other news, the United States Embassy in Barbados is pausing its routine non-immigrant visa services indefinitely as of next Tuesday. The embassy says the decision was taken in light of present COVID-19 protocols in Barbados. People whose appointments will be affected by the decision will be emailed on the process for rescheduling at a later date. The paid machine readable visa MRV fee will also remain valid until September 2022. The processing of interview waiver and renewal interview waiver cases will also continue. The embassy will also continue to accommodate emergency and mission critical non-immigrant visa appointments. However, those appointments are extremely limited. Now the management and staff of ACB Caribbean were in somber reflection today as they paid their final respects to one of their team members who was laid to rest today. The bankers ensured they adhere to all COVID-19 safety protocols as Kim Emmanuel Baird reports. It was a sad day on Wednesday as members of staff at the Antigua Commercial Bank lined the Fries Hill Road at the public cemetery in honor of their former co-worker Tahira Joseph marketing and corporate communications manager at ACB Caribbean, Marita Laurent says they are deeply saddened at this time. To express the sadness and the shock at the loss of a colleague, there really are no words. Deep sadness and, you know, we know we're not the only financial institution going through a loss at the moment, so we reach out to, you know, our brothers and sisters in, in, at CUB as well. Um, we know that they have also suffered a loss. I think the mood is just a heavy one. Laurent says the institution prefers to celebrate the life of Joseph and how she impacted the organization for 12 years. We've had a series of communication to employees and different types of tributes in her honor. So it's an ongoing process and we're trying to cope with it together as a team. The late Ms. Tahira Joseph was a customer service representative at ACB Caribbean. However, her tenure here was 12 years. Tahira Joseph worked in the legal department at ACB, and Laurent gives an insight into her sterling service. Ms. Joseph was exceedingly creative, energetic, bubbly personality that 
her talents were not limited to her primary role at ACB Caribbean. She was quite often involved in anything creative that we had to do, was a volunteer at all company events, was a motivator amongst the teams. This is Kim Emanuel Baird, ABS News. Now on to stories in the courts. A witness says Brody swung first on day three of Kenroy Joseph's murder trial. Prosecutors say Joseph injured, injured Lucien Glennox Brody in a fight that ended in Brody's death three weeks later. Today, a male witness said on February 24, 2016, he and others were preparing Mac Pond playing field for the upcoming cricket season. He says Brody was using a hoe to remove grass near the field's southern goalpost when Joseph approached him cursing. The witness says Joseph then went to his vehicle for a cutlass, placed it in his side, then returned to argue with Brody. He says he was near the field's northern gold post, so he could not hear what they were saying, but saw Brody swing the hoe at Joseph. He says Joseph stepped back, pulled out his cutlass, and began swinging at Brody, who used the hoe stick to block the blows. According to the witness, the force of Joseph's swings pushed Brody to the ground. He says Joseph then went over Brody, chopping him in his upper body at least five times. The witness says when he got nearby, he saw people attending to wounds to Brody's head. The case resumes in the High Court on Thursday. Let's stay with matters in the courts because the Caribbean Court of Justice will hear oral arguments on the 18th of January next year on whether to give British American insurance company policyholders special leave to bring a case against the Trinidad and Tobago government. The policyholders are seeking over 800 million EC dollars compensation for funds they lost when Baico collapsed in 2009. Now, they claim the government in Port of Spain only rescued its citizens when it bailed out the insurance company's local arm. The policyholders say the country uh, discriminated against them because of their nationality. They are petitioning the CCJ in its original jurisdiction for relief under the revised Treaty of Chagaramas. At a case management hearing on Wednesday, the court gave Trinidad and Tobago until the 5th of November to submit written applications as to why it should deny the policyholders' leave. The policyholders have until the 3rd of December to respond to the submissions, and Trinidad and Tobago should reply by December 17. The policyholders filed a class action lawsuit after forming themselves into a company called British American Insurance Company Limited and Colonial Life Insurance Company Limited Policyholders Group, or BACOL. UK-based attorney Simon Davenport Queen's Council is leading their legal team. Deborah Peake, senior counsel, and her team are representing the Trinidad and Tobago government. Now you're up to date on those matters in the court. Of course, let's tell you about a programming note because coming up at 8 o'clock, an absolutely must-see edition of Ask the Doc. We'll be asking the doc about breast cancer because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and that's why we're in shades of pink this evening, Sequoia. So we'll be having three extraordinary doctors join us in our studio, socially distanced, of course. You can ask your questions. You can send your questions on WhatsApp, 268-729-0675 or on our Facebook page. Facebook indeed is back up. So ask the doc coming up at 8 o'clock. Absolutely riveting in store. In the meantime, still to come, more of the national developments we're tracking this evening, including this one. The Prime Minister uses another global stage to urge the developed world to play their part in assisting vulnerable small island states. And later we'll tell you why scientists from the United Kingdom are in Antigua and Barbuda. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online, please do so. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long, but after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. What time is it? It's winning time with Pick 4. Win over $40,000 around the clock with Pick 4. It's the easiest pick in town. And with four draws daily, you get more chances to win over $40,000 with a wager over $10. What time is it? It's winning time with Pick 4 from the Caribbean Lottery. Get your tickets today. today.
We all have dreams, but having a dependable friend who supports them, guides you along the way, and who never gives up on you is just as important. ECAB is more than just your bank. We are that dependable friend who believes in the power of you. Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank. Our future, our bank. Lucozade Energy! Lucozade has two delicious new flavors, but only one can stay. Team Citrus Chill. Team Berry Crush. Vote now on Instagram or Facebook by uploading a video or picture of your favorite flavor and tagging Lucozade. It's up to you which flavor stays. There are over 500 prizes to be won. See press and social media for details. Lucozade, taste the energy. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now, the project to redevelop the cargo port at Deepwater Harbor continues to forge ahead despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. The first of at least five new light towers has been erected in the latest sea change to the facility. Now, ABS's Rakiba Parisi spoke to port manager Darwin Telemat this afternoon, who shed some light on the new development. The first of at least five light towers has been erected here at St. John's Harbor. It's the latest in the Antigua Barbuda port redevelopment project. The new lights bring increased visibility and increased safety for port workers. Port manager Darwin Telemac says the new light towers are approximately 35 meters tall and are noticeable improvements from the previous concrete towers. Before you would have uh, container spaces that were dark, we had challenges of relating to safety, we had challenges related to security. These new light towers that are part of this port redevelopment project uh, sits way above everything that we can stack up. The first light tower was erected Tuesday. Telemark provides an assessment of the improvements in visibility. From last night, I can tell you that what we looked at uh, looks about maybe a 300 feet span. And that was with a yellow softer light with the uh, brighter uh, white lights. I think that could even expand and make it even more dynamic. A second light tower will be erected shortly to further illuminate the area. The, that one is going to be erected pretty much close to where the uh, containers are right now. So we will have these two almost in close proximity to each other. Remaining towers, he explains, will be placed strategically across the harbor. See them all up sometime by maybe March. Yes, because they go up in stages based on uh, what's happening in certain areas. Rakib Aparicio putting for ABS News. Prime Minister, the Honorable Gaston Brown, is calling for developed countries to write off debts for a heavily indebted small island developing states. The Prime Minister, who is also chairman of CARICOM and the Alliance of Small Island States, was speaking at the opening ceremony of the 15th session of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. This is extremely necessary to assist with the recovery from the pandemic and to create the fiscal space so that sits good uh, scale up investments in renewable energy technologies and at the same time to um, pursue blue economy diversification. Now, the proposed debt write-offs will be mere book entries for developed um, states. Now, Prime Minister Brown is also renewing his calling for countries' per capita income to be replaced by a multi-dimensional vulnerability index in determining eligibility for concessional financing. After a year of intense um, consultations with stakeholders, it was found that an MVI is needed for SIDS and the work and the use of the MVI should be completed hopefully sometime in 2022. A team of marine scientists from the United Kingdom are now in Antigua and Barbuda. They are undertaking a series of surveys to improve the country's knowledge of its coastal ecosystems. The scientists are working with the Department of Environment, the DOE, to measure both the depth and carbon content of seagrass beds. They will then provide the first quantitative assessment in this area. Now, this takes, and it takes on even more significance as the world is engaged in efforts to limit the warming of the planet to below 1.5 degrees Celsius 
advanced years of pre-industrial levels. Now, the marine surveys will also provide environmental and ecosystem information that scientists will combine with recent satellite-derived data. This will enable them to extend the seabed habitat maps developed under Antigua and Barbuda's National Adaptation Plan. You would remember that we carried this some months ago in terms of that presentation made uh, by Lindsay Thompson, the resident British commissioner, to uh, Blue Economy Minister Honorable Dean Jonas. Now, we, let's tell you more about uh, resident British commissioner uh, to Antigua and Barbuda, uh, has expressed her delight uh, at the support being offered to Antigua and Barbuda as the country seeks to realize segments of its maritime economy plan. The visit of the scientists comes ahead of the United Nations Climate Change Conference, or COP26, in Glasgow, Scotland, next month, which promises to be extraordinarily important in addressing the issue of climate change. Let's remind you of one of our major developing stories, of course, the very latest on COVID-19. Let's reshow you the dashboard now. 63 uh, cases of COVID-19. Uh, active cases, therefore, up to 1,125. Uh, 10,088 people have received a first dose. 43,648 have been fully vaccinated. So in all, close to 54,000 individuals in this country have received at least one dose. Remember, as we showed you earlier, sharp uptick in the number of people getting vaccinated. The race is towards 80,000. That will give national immunity against COVID-19. Now, you w might uh, want to know what is fueling this increase in the number of cases. Dr. Lester Simon, the head of the laboratory at the Celeste Bird Medical Center, made this clear today. We're in Delta territory totally. Yes. Um, for the month of October, we have a 20 to do, although they may say, look, you, you messed up so bad, all is well. We're going to send 20, but we've sent 10 and then another 10 to see if we're still maintaining the Delta profile going into the rest of October into November. But it's all Delta. As Dr. Simon says, it's all Delta. Coming up in the news from overseas after the break, we'll tell you about these stories to look forward to. New coronavirus cases soar to all-time high in Barbados as the country is placed in a very high-risk category by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And internationally... WHO chief hails new vaccine being developed against malaria. We'll tell you about what is being called a historic moment for medicine. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Please do stay with us. Seeing is experiential. Seeing is everyday life. Seeing is style, class, and sheer sophistication. At iMobile Vision Care, we offer state-of-the-art lab technology the widest variety of quality eyewear from the biggest brands to suit your lifestyle. Stop by our offices at Dr. Rosalie Drive Lower Gambles to get a comprehensive digital eye exam or call us at 562-7823 and ask about our optical care services. I Mobile Vision Care. See and be seen. Summer is ending, but the deals are just beginning with the court's end of summer sale. Get up to 50% off your favorite items to include patio furnishings, pools, coolers, TVs, mattresses, and more. Plus, shop today with the ready finance and pay nothing for 60 days. Take advantage of these sizzling summer deals for a limited time only. Shop in store and online at shopcourts.com. Conditions apply. Courts, bringing value home. Sonnet is here, and it is only available at Harney Motors Limited. Call 462-1062 for pricing and test drives today. I'm Nadia. I'm Junior. I'm JC. I graduated from the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts as valedictorian. I had a rough childhood, but teachers and theater saved me. So now I'm a teacher. Beauty is all around us, and I love helping people remember how beautiful they are. I'm an award-winning playwright, director, and actress. I'm the first recipient of the Local Drama Festival Scholarship. I'm the creative soul behind Artistry by Ham. I own Tegan Tees, a fun t-shirt line that is as Antiguan as you can get. 
I love working with young people and hope to further my studies in counseling one day. I'm also a storyteller, an award-winning creative director, and a social activist. So, should it even matter to you? Who oh, I love. This DCD's Antigua Barbuda project is implemented by the Inter Arts and Women Against Rape in association with the University of the West Indies and co-funded by the European Union. The Regional News is sponsored by Antigua Lottery. Studied hard at school, didn't wanna be a fool, but you're still not in the game. 